people who are alive today that have ever died. And out of this group of people who are alive today, 10 out of every 100,000 of this group of people are affected by a condition called leukemia. So what is leukemia? Leukemia can be defined as a malignant disorder of the hematopoietic stem cells, which is marked by an increase in the level of white blood cells, either in the bone marrow or in the peripheral blood. So what are the causes of leukemia? Now, the exact cause of leukemia is not known, but however, a number of factors play a key role in, in the development of this particular pathology. Among those, among which we have ionizing radiation, cytotoxic drugs, retroviruses, and genetic predisposition. What are the classification of leukemia? Leukemia can be classified as, as acute or chronic based on the cause of the disease. Then based on the cells which are affected, it could be myelogenous leukemia or lymphoblastic leukemia. But also, this myelogenous leukemia and lymphoblastic leukemia could have an acute as well as a chronic cause. When it has an acute cause, it's called acute uh, myelogenous or acute myeloid leukemia. When it has a chronic cause, it is called uh, chronic myelogenous or chronic myeloid leukemia. The same thing applies to the lymphoid cells. When the lymphoid leukemia has an acute cause, it's called acute lymphoblastic leukemia. But when, it's, when it has a chronic cause, it is called the chronic lymphoblastic leukemia. So, summing all these classifications together, you understand that we have four different classes of leukemia. The first one, acute myeloid leukemia, acute lymphoid leukemia, chronic myeloid leukemia, then chronic lymphoid leukemias. The difference between the acute leukemias and then the chronic leukemias is based on the type of cells which are found in this particular leukemias. In the acute leukemias, we have an increase in the proliferation of primitive, primitive undifferentiated and immature cells, therefore giving rise to an increase in the number of blast, blast cells in the bone marrow as well as in the peripheral blood. While in the chronic leukemia, the clonal cells or the leukemic cells are able to differentiate and mature to a certain extent. Therefore, we have what in the blood you are going to see uh, more of a mature cells in chronic leukemias. So, what are the pathophysiological processes that take place in leukemias? Like we have said, for leukemia to occur, first of all, there must be a malignant transformation of the pluripotent stem cells. But however, sometimes this malignant transformation occurs in the multipotent stem cells also. So first thing, the first thing that occurs is what malignant transformation of the pluripotent what stem cells. After this malignant transformation of the pluripotent stem cells, now this malignant this these transformed cells would now start undergoing an abnormal proliferation. And when they undergo an abnormal proliferation, they replace what the normal myeloid tissue, which is uh, which is also called the bone marrow tissue. We have the replacement of the normal bone marrow tissue with what this particular leukemic cells, as well as what the infiltration of what are. Uh, the diverse vital organs in the body by these leukemic cells. Now, as a result of this particular uh, processes, uh, we have what bone marrow suppression. Why do we have bone marrow suppression? It is because we have the replacement of the normal bone marrow tissues by leukemic cells, as well as what. Uh, the release of, of certain inhibitory factors by these leukemic cells which lead to the suppression of the activities of the bone marrow. And what are we talking about here? We're talking about production of hematopoietic cells. 
Now, as a result of this particular uh, uh, processes, there are two uh, 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 clinical manifestations based on these particular processes. That is based on the suppression of the bone marrow activity. Uh, we have symptoms of pancytopenia result and also based on infiltration of vital organs like the spleen, the liver, sometimes even the, uh, the, the gonads are infiltrated as well as the skin. We have symptoms that are attributed to this particular leukemic infiltrations. Okay, now let us talk about the symptoms which are attributed to bone marrow failure because of what? Replacement of the bone marrow tissue. Like I told you before, we're going to have pancytopenia. Okay, based, because of the suppression of the bone marrow, we're going to have symptoms of what? Anemia, courtesy of the pancytopenic state of the patient. And also we're going to have symptoms of what? Neutropenia, as well as thrombocytopenia. When we have symptoms of anemia, what would the patient present with? The patient is going to present with what? Classical symptoms of anemia like what? Uh, fatigue, dizziness, sometimes tinnitus, as well as what? Exertional dipsia. But when we have, what, what are the symptoms attributed to what? Neutropenia. The patient becomes so easily prone to infection. Why? Because we have decreased number of granulocytes in the blood of this particular patient. And the symptoms which are associated with what the traumatopenic state of the patient include what bleeding. The patient bleeds easily, and once the patient starts bleeding, it takes a longer period of time before the bleeding stops because we have decreased number of what platelet or thrombocytes which are necessary to stop this particular bleeding. Having talked about symptoms associated with bone marrow failure. Now let's go into symptoms associated with leukemic infiltration into different parts of the body. When a patient has leukemic infiltration into the spleen, it's called the, the spleen will now undergo what splenomegaly. That means literally the spleen will now become very large. And then when the spleen becomes very large, such patients they usually complain about symptoms of easy sight. That means they easily get satisfied with uh, with eating, as well as what they also sensation of what left upper quadrant what fullness mostly. And then uh, when a patient has a uh, leukemic infiltration into the central nervous system, it's literally called what neuroleukemia. Such patients are going to present with symptoms uh, which are related to what increased what intracranial pressure. What are we talking about here? We're talking about symptoms like vomiting and then symptoms which are associated with, with cranial nerve palsy. Okay, now a patient also which which have uh, which have uh, leukemic infiltration into what the liver. We're going to have what? Hepatomegaly. You're going to, that means the liver will be what? Palpable, actually. And then also patients which have leukemic infiltration into the skin, you're going to have what we call leukemic cortis. Literally, that means you're going to have rashes. And then sometimes those patients will be uh, having kind of an itchy sensation in their, in their skin. And then patients who have what? Leukemic infiltration into their gonads, we're going to have what? They will present with what? Swollen gonads it could be testicular swelling and or any other part of the gonadal system abnormal proliferation clonal expansion as well as diminished apostasis apostasis simply means program or cell death so all these pathophysiological processes playing a role together lead to the replacement of the normal what, bone marrow tissues now the clinical features as which are found in a patient as a result of leukemia is due to two things. First of all, it's due to what we call bone marrow suppression. And secondly, it's due to what we call the leukemic infiltration of what vital organs in the body. All right, now the clinical symptoms which are presented in the patient due to bone marrow suppression or, other, or otherwise called bone marrow failure are due to two things also. The first thing is due to the replacement, like I said before, of what the, the normal uh, tissues in the bone marrow by leukemic cells and secondly, it's due to the release of certain inhibitory factors by those leukemic cells, which eventually lead to the decrease in the activities of what, the bone marrow. So all this in playing a role together leads to a decrease in what in the normal uh, hematopoietic processes which are supposed to take place in the bone marrow, therefore presenting a, what, a pan cytopenic state in a patient. Pan cytopenic state simply means we have a decreased erythrocyte, decreased leukocyte, as well as decreased what, thrombocyte. Because of decreased erythrocyte, we have, we have what symptom of anemia. The patient becomes anemic. 
giving us uh, clinical manifestations so that what uh, incisional dyspnea as well as uh, uh, tachycardia palpitation as well as what cardiac outflow murmur sometimes uh, on physical examination you can be able to reveal cardiac outflow murmurs on such patients then symptoms due to neutropenia uh, makes the patient much more prone to infections as well as symptoms due to thrombocytopenia makes the, uh, makes the patient to, to bleed easily as well as difficulty in what the body controlling uh, this particular bleeding because of decrease in what platelets as also the second clinical manifestation due to leukemia like we said is due to what leukemic infiltration of what organs in the body what organs are we talking about here we're talking about liver we're talking about the spleen we're talking about the skin we're talking about the gonads and also sometimes also what the central nervous system are also affected by leukemic infiltration once the spleen is affected patients usually complain of what lack of a quadrant fullness and easy word society and also once the central nervous is affected it's called what neuro leukemia in this particular neuro leukemia uh, the patient presents with symptoms related to what infracranial pressure what are we talking about here we're talking about symptoms such as headaches we're talking about symptoms such as vomiting and we're also talking about symptoms such as what cranial nerve palsy and all these things play together are all these roles all these roles all these are symptoms are due to what one or two effect of this particular leukemic cells either on the bone marrow or on what vital organs now how do you suspect what the diagnosis of what leukemia normally the diagnosis of leukemia is done when a patient comes for what a routine medical checkup then on the cbc you're going to see an abnormally increased what white blood cells and abnormally increased white blood cells will now tell you to probe more into this particular patient. What you do further is what to carry out what, a bone marrow what, biopsy. When you carry out a bone marrow biopsy through aspiration of the bone marrow, then you can be able to determine which type of leukemia is actually affecting this particular patient. Because you cannot actually determine which particular type of leukemia is affecting the patient based on the CBC. On, the, on carrying out a bone marrow biopsy, you are going to carry out a certain examination of what on the morphology of the cells found there, as well as what the immunophenotyping of those particular cells, determining the, what the surface markers which are present on the surfaces of these particular cells. And also, you can be able to carry out a cytogenetic what, examination of the different cells which are revealed in the bone marrow. All right, then let's dive into the treatment of general principles which are involved in the treatment of leukemia. All right, the, the central aim of the therapy in leukemia is what complete remission. And then the second aim is what elimination of just what leukemic cells. The third aim is the restoration of the normal CBC as well as what uh, decrease in the normal of the blood cell to less than 5%. And also the last aim of this particular treatment is elimination of all that what additional symptoms found in the patient. Okay now. The major idea or major principles involved in the treatment of leukemia are divided into phases. We have what the phase of induction is called remission induction phase. We also have the phase of consolidation, which is also called remission consolidation phase, as well as we have other, the, the phase of maintenance, which is called remission maintenance phase. Alright, in some cases, especially in the lymphoblastic leukemia, we also have the phase of what CNS prophylaxis in which you prevent the occurrence of what neuro leukemia in this patient. Okay, now let's talk about the remission induction phase. The remission induction phase, this, this phase actually is a phase where you carry out what a massive administration of what a multiple chemotherapeutic agent to the patient, which aim is to what to, in, to induce remission in this particular patient. All right, now, you in this particular state, the patient has high chance of developing what we call a bone marrow hypoplasia. Now, in this particular state, this patient requires a high level intensive care, high level intensive care from our specialists, different specialists, because it's going to suffer a lot of consequences based on the drugs administered to this patient as well as what the central uh, disease which is actually affecting this particular patient because the drug themselves has adverse side effects on the, what, the bone marrow of this particular patient that's why the patient suffers from what bone marrow hypoplasia but 
uh, there are multiple drugs which are used in what in this particular emission induction phase. Among which we have drugs such as what the van van Christine, as well as what the prednisolone is also used uh, in this particular remission induction phase. Also, the alda, the level aspirogenase is also used in this what remission induction phase, and also what the downorubenesine are also used in this remission induction phase. So before we go further, I want us to take a short break. <laughs> I'm